Energy's home improvement plan includes improving the safety of bathrooms for elders. The Shindian Education Recycling Station fulfills a special role due to its unique location. I'm Sean Scanlon. This is Die Headlines. Let's get started. Zuji's home improvement plan for community elders is still ongoing. A special emphasis has been the safety of bathrooms for the elderly. Volunteers have entered many homes with the goal of both educating the elderly and improving their home safety. One, two, three. 真正的哦,給他好啦,真正的給個轉轉呢。I remember that when I went to the bathroom I felt dizzy and fell backward. He hit the back of the head causing a concussion, so he was hospitalized for a week. I bumped my head so my memory became worse. Yes, his memory became poor. I'm afraid he would forget to turn off the gas, so I told him not to cook and leave it to me. Many people of this generation are mostly farmers. Many of them are old. Their actions are relatively slow. Their arms and legs are not so flexible. So we often hear about their falling or someone falling down from a bicycle. Hey, if I'm healthy, I would be quite independent. I would go wherever I want or go traveling with others, but now I can't. Now we help you install one so that you won't feel slippery. In this process, of course, there are still some elders who may be reluctant to receive Zuji's help because they think that they are still fine, should be able to do that. This is something we need to work hard on in the future. I often wash here. Just installing one handle here should be enough for me. I think this home improvement project is indeed a very good project for the elderly in our community. As long as we continue to do it, there should be more people joining in later. During the auspicious 7th lunar month, Jai Zigi volunteers promoted vegetarianism in the community. Some communities invited doctors to speak out and some used cooking demonstrations, which garnered good feedback. Here's more. 
for elders how to eat vegetarian food in order to have a balanced nutrition. Gigi volunteers are giving an easy to understand presentation to tell everyone, together with a live cooking demonstration, so that people can learn easily. Sugi's sister show us how to cook vegetarian dishes. I think it's better for everyone not to eat meat. It's good to eat some vegetarian food. In the auspicious month, Jia Yi Chiji volunteers are actively working into different communities to promote vegetarianism, and the chairman of her Mu community takes initiative to support. Our elders here are over 65 years old. They are slowly accepting the ideal of being a vegetarian, making everyone healthier. In Minxiong, volunteers also convey these healthy concepts of vegetarianism. At a blessing ceremony, flowers and fragrance are used instead of the traditional meat offerings. Everyone feels a peace of mind. Zhiji came today to host this blessing ceremony so as to bring peace and auspiciousness to our villagers, and the society will be more peaceful. The change in diet, based on my own experience, is to have as little meat as possible. To promote vegetarianism, volunteers invite professional doctors to share his experience, and people are willing to try. I feel very well to eat vegetarian food. Now I'm a bit reluctant to see meat and fish. Generally speaking, I eat a lot of vegetables, and we're actually moving towards going meatless. With right here's faith and thoughts to pass the seventh lunar month, so every day can be auspicious and peaceful. The Xindian Education Recycling Station is very special as it is located near Taipei Ziji Hospital in the local Jingsa Hall. It occupies over 1,000 square meters, has moved many times, it was once a mobile recycling station, and now it occupies a former hog pen. Let's take a look. Forming a triangle of love with Xindian Jingsi Hall and the Taipei Zhiji Hospital, the Xindian Recycling Station sits on a land that's over 1,000 square meters. Many of the volunteers who come here spend more time at the station than they do at home. However, the placement of this recycling station here did not just fall into place. I remember the recycling day back in Beijing Elementary. It had a lot of people. Each week, over 100 people would show up to sort recyclables. In 2002, Ziji volunteers would drive around the Xinxian Street in Zhongyang Borough and other nearby communities to pick up recyclables. The truck was the makeshift mobile recycling station. After collection, we didn't have a place to store it, so we just left everything on the truck. We would first sell the cardboard the same day, then leave the tin and metal cans and such on the truck. Then later, when I had a break from work, I would then take it to sell. It was problematic without a permanent recycling station. Then in 2004, thanks to the affinity form with one of our sisters, a property owner on Mingshan Road lent us a piece of land to use, which was a former hawk pen. We were very happy to have a place to do recycling, so we mobilized a few volunteers to remodel the place. <laughs> With the opening of the Minshan Recycling Station, we welcome everyone to come protect our mountains and oceans. Next, a Da'a vegetable garden was formed next to the parking lot, which became a rare green piece of land in the middle of the city. Finally, in 2008, the Xindian Recycling Education Station was officially established at the current location. However, the plan to build a rainwater reservoir was inspired by wanting to save money. There is electricity, but it needs running water. However, the installation was costly and we wanted to save money. So instead, an underground water reserve was dug. This reserve can hold 30 tons of water, which can be used for hand washing and flushing the toilet. Oh, 
Many people have invested their time and effort in this place. I've been rewarded with my health and gained happiness. It's our riches to keep and our loss by not participating. Liu Shiping is a recycling volunteer for Ciji, and she has been pushing this heavy cart day in and day out, in and out of the alleyways for the past 24 years. I don't go on vacation, even if my children ask me to go, because I'm not finished with my job. Collecting recyclables is my job during the day. I don't earn money from it, but not because it doesn't make money. <laughs> These days, the recycling mission has the participation of many volunteers. But in the early days, it was just a few volunteers maintaining it. One of those people was the owner of a steam bun stall, Zhou Shihua, who used his own delivery truck to pick up recyclables. Back then, he knew all the right places to stop. In the past, many of the sisters would place the recyclables out on the curb for us on San Ming Road, or was in section 433 of the road is the same. There are many points and I would just head over to pick them up. At the recycling station, everyone works hard to make the tasks more efficient, even this 80-some-year-old volunteer. It is difficult to store the recyclables up there if it's too heavy, so I thought of a way. There was a pulley and I had two hooks to help with the balance. With one person up there to catch and one down here to pull, it's easy to manage. Plus, everyone likes to use this system. This recycling station often serves as an educational field trip for nearby schools, businesses and other organizations. Not to mention the family time spent here by Tsuji volunteers and their children. Amidst the twists and turns of the city streets, the recycling station unites everyone. As here, people are always willing to spend their time sustaining the planet. Today we meet 91-year-old recycling volunteer Kang Su Dong. She was born into a large farming family and lived a difficult life. At the recycling station, she doesn't shy away from doing dirty jobs and doesn't take any days off as she fears losing her recycling job. Let's meet her. When I started, I was in Zhanghua. I was there for two years before coming here to Luzhou. In the beginning, she felt the volunteers here were cold and distant. When we went, we called her mother, mother. And when the other volunteers heard, they began to call her that too. Afterwards, she felt this place was similar to the countryside. I don't take a break. I'm here on Sundays and also Lunar New Year. Mother, don't forget to take a bathroom break. Sometimes she will be so into her work that she forgets to use the restroom. Oh, 
<laughs> when we see her basket is full, we will want to help her move it, but she doesn't rely on others. I didn't get an education. I have five sisters and one of my brothers passed away. Since young, I've had to help on the rice farm, and other times I would go out and try to make money. Life was difficult. When we were younger, we often had to borrow rice from our neighbors. We wouldn't know where the rice would come from for our next meal. My mother had seven children and she was malnourished, too. She got sick often and her stomach would hurt. She kept hallucinating there were bugs everywhere, at the door or elsewhere. Bugs were everywhere and she was afraid to eat. She kept saying she couldn't sleep and needed to take sleeping pills, but I didn't think that was a good long-term solution. My cousin then took her to the Zhanghua Jingsu Hall to volunteer her time, and then she took up recycling. It was good to have company each day to chat, and her spirits began to lift. Then my father passed away, and we didn't want her to stay in Zhanghua by herself, so we asked her to move to Luzhou. I was here on the 28th, 29th, and on the 1st of the Lunar New Year, as well as the 2nd. I'm here every day. I need to be here to sort recyclables because it cannot be abandoned. Someone from Dai TV came to film me and asked me why I'm collecting recyclables for. I said to save the planet. I'm afraid of losing my job here. That's right. They might not need me if there is no more recycling to be done. My mother started doing book recycling, but then later we began to do plastic bag recycling. Sometimes the plastic bowls and cups will have chilled gum or betel nut leftovers, but she doesn't mind it, she'll handle it. Her response surprised me. I am a person that does hard work. I'm from Zhanghua and I don't wear gloves when I work. Sometimes she wash the plastic for so long that her hand becomes irritated and she will continue on even in the winter. It really breaks my heart when I see her like that. I've met the master many times, at year and blessing ceremonies and such. One time in Shenzhou, the master told me to stay warm because it's cold outside. She really cares for us. I only watch the news. There are many news anchors that are good, like Josephine and that one named Zhen Jiaqi. The other good one is Claire Liu. Also, Ni Mingjun has not aged. <laughs> Seniors should do more and help out others. If the master heard me, she would laugh at me. The biggest change this summer is the explosion of tourists on Taiwan's outlying islands. In previous years, people had used the holiday to go abroad. But this year, the global pandemic led Lan Yu, Peng Hu, and Jin Men to experience power outages and excess garbage. Here's more about the high cost of domestic tourism. Take a look. The coronavirus epidemic has led more citizens to visit outlying islands. As the crowds surge, more boats have been scheduled and still it may not be enough to discourage these crowds. It took an hour and a half to get on the boat after waiting in line, and it was like going abroad. We often go abroad. Because of the epidemic, we're here instead. So many people during summer vacation were not able to go abroad. This may be double the number of people. During summer vacation, we get over 10,000 people a day, and on normal weekends, about 7,000 to 8,000 visitors. If you count two people per scooter, 10,000 tourists takes 5,000 scooters while traveling on the island. This together with air pollution caused by resident scooters, it has been a big problem. There is not only air pollution, but also the amount of waste oil is terrifying. 
There are 1,200,000 registered residents in Xiaoliuqiu, and the permanent population is only 8,000, with an area of less than 7 square kilometers. However, there are 10,000 scooters on the island, and the problem of waste oil is largely untreated as it is just dumped in large oil drums near scooter dealerships. And this is just one typical shop. Many scooter rental shops need to change the oil on the scooters, so it is producing a lot of waste oil. Xiaoliuqiu tourism has really seen lots of tourists during this time. The intertidal zone controls the number of visitors, and it is only open when accompanied by a guide. However, every day 10,000 people visit the island, and for tourists who make a special trip, they all want to experience it. There are often many people who do not cooperate. They complain to us, but we have always been patient. If you count the groups doing snorkeling, and including those who don't snorkel, there are about 300 people. We patrol our beach every day and clean up the beach trash. This time, it's especially obvious, as in the past during summer months, in one day, we get 9 to 10 metric tons of trash, which have increased to 10 to 11 metric tons this year. Except for Mazu, the amount of waste in other regions has increased dramatically. The most exaggerated is Lanyu, which has exactly twice the amount of waste. This doesn't include the amount that is incinerated, as transport costs alone are 4 million U.S. dollars. In fact, there are targets for these township offices and outlying islands to reduce the amount of garbage by 2% every year. Xiaoliuqiu currently has 28 cleaning staff, but there's about 1 million tourists. Sorting is a bit slow, but a lot of garbage comes in at once, and the processing speed of our staff is too late. Now we have changed to the turnkey approach, as the producer directly loads the recycled items to mainland Taiwan. The problem in Lan Yu is even more serious. No one knows exactly how long it will take to wait for the transfer of dozens of bags of rubbish that are taller than people. Sometimes when the weather is bad, it takes several days to sort out the garbage on the outlying islands. Follow-up sorting work is more important on this island than in Taiwan. The Taidong County government organizes activities to encourage tourists to take away their garbage to the main island. We do this because we had an event there for three days. We brought the garbage back by ourselves because we can't throw away the garbage there. Electricity is also very tight. Since the beginning of summer this year, Lan Yu, Penghu, and Qinmen have all seen jumps due to an overload of electricity demand. The demand for power generation on the outlying islands has increased significantly compared with the same period last year. Lan Yu increased by 20.72%, Green Island 15.04%, and Penghu 12.33%. Taiwan's energy is limited and people's desires are not limited then the so-called domestic travel will have serious consequences. In Singapore, Ziji Teachers Association celebrated Teachers' Day by hosting a special tea ceremony. We leave you with these images goodbye.